kind thanks go to Brilliant for sponsoring this episode. SpaceX, Starship Updates and Kennedy Space Center Starlink Ground Station and Talks with Astronomers. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. And as always there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately so let's take right off. Starship Updates If you've watched my latest episode you know that we're one huge step further in the Starship prototyping phase. Starship Serial Number 4 has passed the dreaded cryogenic test and is now being prepared for the next steps. SpaceX has finally done it and anticipation is high for what's to come next in the coming weeks. In fact, right after the test, in the early morning hours of the next day, workers in Boca Chica immediately started working on the test stand. As usual, no time at all is wasted down in Texas and with such high goals this will have to continue for quite some time into the future. Starting a colony on another planet is not an easy task at all and there is just no other project to look at for advice. This is groundbreaking research. Even though it might look like fancier and fancier water towers to those taking a first look. The hydraulic press needed to simulate thrust from three Raptor engines while the cryogenic tests were conducted has already been taken out of the test stand. The system is only needed for this one test and will go into storage now until the next Starship, presumably serial number 5, hits the test stand. And the space under serial number 4 is gonna be needed for something else anyway. The full flow staged combustion Methalox Raptor engine. I had to say it again, what a wonderful name for a rocket engine. And that Raptor is on the prowl already. With a carcade arguably bigger than that of serial number 4 when it rolled out to the launch site, a Raptor left the construction site and traveled down highway 4 towards the sea. Musk stated at the beginning of the week right after serial number 4's cryogenic test that a static fire was planned for the end of the week and SpaceX was in full preparation for it. Attaching the Raptor to the test stand is not a task that takes a lot of time and so preparations for the first Raptor ignition after almost a year were in full swing. And the team at the construction site as always did not take a break either. Infrastructure is taking shape more and more. One of the onion tents has grown significantly. From an original 80 meter length to now over 110 meters in total length further and further raising SpaceX's manufacturing capabilities at the site. All these are preparations for a better streamlined production cycle. Stations for each manufacturing step take lots of space and that's what's created here. And with the new large building presumably for ring manufacturing finished, the time is right to close these loops and make the project work even faster. Short distances between all the different manufacturing stations will enable SpaceX to aim for an incredible speed when it comes to prototype manufacturing. This whole place is built to be fast and innovative. A workshop for a Mars rocket. And more tents will grow in the near future as well. Workers have already started concrete pouring in front of another onion tent in preparation for a new pad. As soon as it's finished it might be used to extend the length of a second large tent. SpaceX is constantly running out of space it seems. I have one more little thing to add from serial number 4's cryogenic test here by popular demand. On my last episode I saw comments about a possible fire at the fuel farm while the test was going on popping up here and there. So the reason why I did not mention a fire while the cryogenic test was going on is that this was not a fire. It's venting from the tanks which is perfectly normal. Due to lights behind it though it was quite dramatically backlit and so it could be mistaken as a fire, especially on Lewis's webcam. Even though Lab Padre does an absolutely astonishing job providing a live feed from the dunes of Boca Chica, the system has its limitations and so sometimes the picture is not as crisp as we'd like it to be. So no worries, this was just a normal venting. And on we go with an update from Alex Rex, who is still busy making the most complete virtual map of Boca Chica in existence. If you've not done so yet, go check out his channel, like and most importantly subscribe so he actually receives some compensation for his work. He's doing an awesome job and deserves it. Links in the description. This is the SpaceX Boca Chica complex from above. Here you get an excellent overview of how it's all connected. Both sites are connected by Highway 4 and the distance between both sites is roughly a 2 minute drive by car. Down at the beach we have the test site with serial number 4 and the Starhopper. 
If you visit Boca Chica, you can park your car right on the opposite side of the road and look at all of this up close. It's definitely worth the trip. Up at the construction site, you can see the tent that's recently been extended. The steadily growing campground with trailers where a few of the workers and Elon live right next to where history is made. Next to the construction site, we have the tracking station and a large solar array. These antennas will play a major role once Starship flights go higher and higher and the solar arrays are used to reduce the CO2 footprint of the site and make the facility redundant from power outages. And as Alex states correctly, the site will grow quickly in the coming months. Again, thank you Alex for this awesome project. You're providing us with something that did not exist before you started your work. Here's another one from the community. With kind thanks to Alex Delderfield for giving me permission to show it on my episode, here's his latest rendering work. He took Elon Musk's latest drone shot for serial number 4 on the test stand and replaced it with a later prototype. Let's say this is serial number 7, so we don't get in trouble with the timelines. This is what it should look like when a more finished version of Starship goes for the 20km flight later this year. In comparison with serial number 4, it becomes apparent that a lot of tech is still missing until that can happen and it gives an absolutely cool looking preview of what's in store for this year. If SpaceX wants to still go orbital with Starship this year, they will have to even do more, as the systems attached to the outside and the lack of a heat shield would not be enough for such a launch. Well done Alex, you can find a link to his Twitter profile in the description. Go check him out, as you can see it's worth it, you rock! Last but not least, let's take another look at our Starship Progress Overview. This is where we keep track of the progress on the current prototype under construction. Since SpaceX is going with a segment approach now, speed has increased drastically and so keeping track has become a rather difficult job. So where are we at with serial number 5? We have the bottom dome with the thrust puck which goes here. We have the wall segment for the liquid oxygen tank which goes here. On we go with the common dome right in the middle of the two main tanks, which goes here. Finishing off the methane tank, we have the top dome including all the rings, which go here. And on we go with the nose cone and the three rings below it, which are already stacked and go here. We also by now have the thrust section rings stacked to the bottom dome, which has recently been done and they of course go here. Finishing today's progress update, we have the engine skirt including the legs, which goes here. Look at this, it's unbelievable, but it's now almost done. Where serial number 4 is still sitting on the test stand waiting for the static fire which was cancelled due to high winds at the site and has been moved to tomorrow with backup dates for Saturday and Sunday, serial number 5 is already almost done. This is how fast SpaceX already is. Here's to SpaceX's progress so far and to inspiring so many by doing what no one thought possible. Progress is good, milestones are achieved and we can look forward to an incredible year ahead with the Starship program. If you've not done so yet, make sure to follow me on Twitter as well to get additional info on Starship, SpaceX and the space community in general. Kennedy Space Center, Starlink Ground Station and Talks with Astronomers Starlink has been all over the news again recently and so I decided to dive into possible problems connected to the mega constellation and into what's done on the infrastructure side right now. So let's look at some recent info Musk has shared at a recent presentation about what's being done to mitigate the effects of Starlink on the astronomy community. Starlink arguably is one of the most important projects run by SpaceX right now. It's not about the glory connected to sending astronauts to the ISS or building starships. It's more like the diligent little helper in the background, trying to get the basis done for much larger things to come. Starlink will be a major funding contributor to SpaceX's future projects, including a Mars colony. So Starlink is very important for SpaceX. One big problem surfaces all the time though when it comes to those little satellites. There are going to be a lot of them. 40,000 when it comes to Elon's prediction and those little buggers will clutter up our skies. Even more, they will reflect light and emit a few kilowatts of KU band microwaves. That's not much when it comes to effects on the whole planet, but it's much when looking at the sky with a super sensitive scientific instrument. So the concerns put out by the astronomy community are valid. It's not as easy as you might think. You can't just run an image processing software over telescope pictures to filter out Starlink satellites. There are huge projects in development to classify and catalog faint objects in the night sky and those specialized projects will be greatly affected by Starlink. 
So SpaceX is trying to mitigate the effects Starlink sets will have on these kinds of projects. At the recent Astro 2020 conference, Musk and SpaceX gave a presentation, showing the latest efforts and giving a prediction for the future. Musk said that they are very much interested in talking to the astronomy community further to fight problems together. He also said that even on the next Starlink 7 launch to be conducted on May 7th, the satellites will start carrying a sunshade to block reflections of antennas and that the other big factor, the solar panel, will be reduced by special orientation roll maneuvers during orbit raising. Starlink satellites have two different solar array orientations. The open book orientation and the shark fin orientation. On orbit raising, the open book orientation is used for thrusting and drag reasons and so from both the antenna and the solar panel light is being reflected back down to the planet. That's why the Starlink trains look so impressive from down here directly after launch and a few weeks into the mission. After the orbit is raised, the solar panel is flipped up during sunset and sunrise to maximize solar power generation. In this state though, only the antenna reflects light back to the ground. So the sunshade in front of the antenna should reduce the satellite's albedo drastically. Furthermore, Musk said that V1 satellites will be phased out in 3 to 4 years as Starlink will be a fast iteration system with older hardware being phased out constantly to greatly increase throughput of the satellites. So those pesky bright version 1 satellites will be gone rather soon. Also, I recently had a talk with SpaceX officials and they have chosen to only go as high as 600 km with the Starlink orbits, leaving the 1000 km and above planes empty. These are very important for astronomers and so it's another step into the right direction. So at least there's effort from both sides to make the best of the situation. Let's hope open words do not turn into fights. Furthermore, SpaceX is more and more going into operation rather than just raising the number of satellites. Recent documents show SpaceX's plans to build a fully-fledged Starlink ground station near their fairing processing facility at Cape Canaveral. Located on a patch of land 15 by 15 meters large on the Banana River and near ULA's Launch Complex 37, it will sport a large satellite dish antenna for communication with the Starlink network. So Starlink is growing and it's a project that will hardly be stopped by telescopes. It is very important for everyone to get together and work on solutions. A possible solution for example would be to use starships to get the sensors needed for astronomy above the Starlink layer. There are many different ideas circulating around for large space-based telescopes utilizing starships as a lift vehicle and SpaceX has signaled multiple times that they are very interested in such a mission. Sometimes we have to evolve our old systems to adapt to new situations and sometimes the stimulus for change even brings new ideas surpassing the old ones. If you're looking for the right stimulus for some great ideas, why not check out today's sponsor. Brilliant is exactly that, a place full of stimulation for your thoughts. A place where you can dive into knowledge, learn new things and connect dots you were not able to connect before. Featured in international media and with high ratings from over 60,000 satisfied customers, they are proof that sometimes a unique approach can give a far better result. With content spanning from basic math to artificial neural networks and all the way to space-related content, Brilliant provides a huge library full of storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges and problem solving for you to improve yourself for future tasks. Get a catalyst for new ideas and do it step by step in an organized way. Brilliant makes that easy with interactive exploration and a mobile app that you can take with you wherever you go. Brilliant puzzles you, surprises you and expands your understanding of the modern world. To get new motivation and at the same time support What About It, go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and sign up to try out over 60 interactive courses for free. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 people to join through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Renew your thoughts with Brilliant. Links in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? How long will it take SpaceX to get a starship into orbit and what's your opinion about Starlink's influence on astronomy? As always, tell me in the comments. And here we are again at the YouTube member and Patreon shoutout. Building the basis of all our operations, these people are incredibly important for the channel and so I take the time on every episode to thank them for ideas, research and funding provided to me and my team on a constant basis. Without these people, the community would not exist and without the community, there would not be a channel. 
so show your love for them in the comments and maybe even consider becoming one yourself. And as on every single episode, there are new members on the team. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Eduardo, Rafael, Benedito, Terry Newton, Richard Parlone, Liam Foley, David West, D. Falk, and many others. You rock. And what you see here on the side is my team of researchers, web admins, animators, and helpers of all sorts. If you're interested in helping the cause and you think there's something you could contribute, become a patron and dive right into an awesome community bringing you What About It twice a week. Thank you, team. Without you, this journey wouldn't be the same. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? And now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny, and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It? and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Ooh, it is moving. Oh, it is moving very slow. Lewis, how about that? <laughs> Even though he provides life, doesn't he? I mean, come on, especially in times of Corona. And maybe even... Yeah, cool.